Hi everyone, welcome to the video. I'm at Flatbury today and uh, we're going to be fishing the Avon. So behind me across the fields there is the uh, is the weir peg, which uh, I've always had an interest in uh, fishing and uh, I've just been across there and it's free. So uh, we're going to get the gear out, get across the fields, get set up and uh, four or five hours, something like that, get a session on the weir peg. Just before we head across the fields towards the peg, let me show you the car parking for this BAA stretch. So this is the road that comes through Fabry village from the Worcester direction. So make your way through the village and just as you exit, you've got this lay by area on the right hand side that will take seven or eight cars. Opposite there, you've got a stile across the field, plenty of BAA signage. There's a mown path across to the gate on the far side that's got the standard BAA combination lock on. And then just the other side of the tree line there is the Avon and uh, the Weir Peg. The stretch also goes uh, off into the distance. You've got a bridge uh, down there. Um, there's, there's plenty of good fishing on the BAA stretch down by that bridge. To access that, if you drive past the lay-by, on the apex of this bend, just there, there's a lane that's also got the BAA combination lock on a gate. So if you go through there, that'll take you down a track and you can park pretty much behind your peg, further down the stretch by the bridge. Well, that's the view to have this morning. Look at that. Not a cloud in the sky for them. Maybe some stunning views of the river from up there. Wow, what a scene this is. Flabbery Mill on the far side there, just the other side of the weir. What a place to be wet in a line. Let's have a quick look at where the spots are then for now. So left hand rod, just on the right edge of those reeds there. It's quite snaggy around to the left hand side of the reeds, so we're just going to target the right edge. And then the right hand rod, which is just on a lead, just on the edge of that turbulent water. I don't go any further into the turbulent water because that's probably full of boughs, branches, all sorts of debris. See if we can tempt a bite right on the edge. Well, we're out right on the bank, rods are out now. Conditions aren't ideal, to be honest. It's very bright today. Air temperature's not anywhere near as high as what it's been in recent times. Uh, it's probably forecast for about 23, 24 degrees today, but there's literally, you can just see behind me there, there's literally no cloud cover at all. The sun's out shining, it's very bright already, so the fish are gonna be probably quite spooky, quite wary. Um, probably aren't gonna feed that heavily today. So we'll be fishing for an odd bite, but we're here on the bank, room with a chance. So let's see how we get along. Let's have a look around today's swim. So starting with the main weir on the far side, next to the old mill there, fast flowing water into a deeper section. And the current comes round the outside and passes down to the right. So in front of the peg here, you can probably see the bottom actually, it's really, really shallow. In front of that, we've got a weed bed that comes in an L shape. It's quite thick weed, so landing fish today is gonna to be interesting. In front of here, we've got some deeper water. Got a nice slack area in front of that reed line. So we're definitely gonna target that area today. And then we've got a bypass off the weir, small section that's coming down the side here creating a little bit of turbulent water in the corner. So the main area we're gonna get the rods today is in here. It's definitely too shallow on the, uh, on the near side here. There's a gravelly bar there that's out of the water. That shows you the lack of depth. There is some depth up against the reed line over there, but there's no way you're gonna be able to bring any fish across this shallow area to land them on the near side bank. So. There's a gap here just where the ducks are passing through where potentially could play fish 
through there. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting little day. A few challenges in this swim, but let's give it a go. Get some lines out. See how we get along. Well, we've got a bite on the right hand rod. Couple of solid taps there. Not a huge take, but there's a lot of fish has found a snag. It's not surprising for this swim. Let's just get a different angle on it. Move down the bank a little bit, see if we can get it moving. That's it, moving again now. It's the thing with these weir pools, all sorts of debris out there, so uh, anything can happen. I can feel the line grating on another snag now. This is probably a chub that's going to dive for every snag it can find out there. Well, that was a blow. First bite there and, we, and we've lost it. Fairly sure it was a chub. Took itself off into a couple of snaggy areas. Once it got near to that weed bed there on the, on the tip of it, it's buried itself. It's got in there tight. I've had to apply a bit of pressure from a couple of different angles to try and free it up and the, uh, and the hook's pulled. So uh, yeah, disappointing, but uh, at least we know there's a spot out there where there's a few fish holding up and uh, we picked up a bite so uh, we'll persevere with that and uh, for the next bite I'll try and uh, navigate the fish around the end of that weed bed so if we can get the next one netted and on the bank. Well, first fish of the uh, session. <laughs> that is what you call Mr. Greedy Chub or Chublet. Wow. Okay, fish on right hand rod. Doesn't feel particularly big at all, unless it's swimming quickly towards me. Right, let's see if we can get it past this weed now. Straight in the weed as predicted. Chub. That's it in the net. Right, so here's the first uh decent sized fish of the session so right hand rod CKO boily it's done the bite there we go nice looking chub in good nick whoops there you go mate lively fella just over three pounds that'll do very nicely let's get him back get the rod back on the spot see if we can get a bigger one well, it's easier to get the castaway off the uh, bank from up here. Get the rod back on the spot.
So this is the peg area. It's quite tight down here to cast. So as I've just shown you there, I'm nipping up on this bank just behind me. It's far e easier to get a cast away from up there with no obstruction behind you. Well, nice, we've got that chub there. So we're first proper fish of the session, just over three pounds. So right hand rod, a couple of sensible taps there. Not that aggressive a take, but enough that you'd strike into it. So we're hooked straight into the fish. No real fight, to be honest, typical chub uh, of that sort of size, really. D tried to dive in the weed on the way in, but uh, yeah, managed to get that one out and uh, into the net. So uh, yeah, happy days. Overhead conditions, not great, to be honest, guys. So uh, I'm not very hopeful for the rest of the session today. So uh, chances of getting a barbell on the bank are probably pretty slim, I would say, today. But uh, lines are in the water, so we've got a chance. Let's uh, see what the next couple of hours brings. and. Uh, yeah, whilst we've got a bait in the river, then uh, you never know. Got the core and one and three quarter pound test curve barber rods with me today. To get to that reed line over there is not far off maximum chuck on these rods. I would say if you've got a two and a half or two and a quarter pound test curve rod, you could probably get one over into the semi-turbulent water over there if you wanted to try that. That obviously comes with quite a bit of risk controlling a fish at distance, but if you do want to have a dart on this particular peg at Flabbury at some point in the future, then hopefully that helps to understand what kit you need before you get here. Well, one thing I would say about this stretch is uh, I would bring plenty of terminal tackle with you. So uh, I've just had to re-rig the left-hand rod for the third time. Uh, I'm probably going to have to re-spool the reels after this as well because uh, there's probably a bit of stretch in the uh, main line, unfortunately. But it's very, very snaggy out there. The level's quite low, but there's still been quite a bit of debris come down the river by the look of it. It's just sat in the bottom of the weir pool. Yeah, it's... Um, it's not ideal to be honest there's obviously some big fish here which uh, is what makes this particular peg and stretch you know really popular and uh, i want to i wanted to fish it for uh, quite a while just for that reason but it's not the easiest fishing to be honest so uh, if you are thinking of coming down here to flatbury it's a bit of a risk or reward game i guess you know you've got to be in it to catch one of the uh, potential 11 12 or even 13 pound barbel that sort of reside here but you are going to lose some gear in the process. Here's another one of these little chublets we're having today. Good signs for the river, nice healthy fish. Let's get you back mate. Go tell your bigger brother to come and say hello. Okay, time for a change on the left-hand rod. So uh, keep picking up those small one to one and a half pound chublets on the uh, pellet. So I'm going to shift off that now just to try and see if we can flush out a, a better fish out of the uh, out of the swim. So sticky krill dumbbells. That's what it looks like. Now I mount these horizontally. Some people mount them vertically. I'm honestly not sure there's a great deal in it to be honest uh, either way but it's probably just a personal preference thing but going in with a horizontal so uh, let's get out get that out in the swim see if I can change our fortunes and uh, pick up a better fish so that's the left hand rod back out again now on the sticky krill dumbbell and I've moved it off the reed line now and I found a spot about halfway along the weirpool wall over there it seems to be snag free so I'm going to bait that up now, see if we can pick up some bites from over there, over the remainder of the session. A 
I don't suspect this is going to help. Well, I think it's one of those days on the bank where things just don't quite go to plan today. So, uh, yeah, seem to be getting uh, plagued by small chublets. Kids on canoes. It's summer holidays. You know, they're entitled to use the river as well, but it doesn't do my session any good. But hey, ho, it's the way it goes sometimes. But uh, yeah, probably going to stick it out for another half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that, just to see if uh, anything materialises. Uh, if not, it's just probably one of those days where you just got to ride it off as a bad job. Right then, that's uh, going to be the end of the session for today. So uh, yeah, a few trouble on the bank today, beaten by Mr. Barbell. So what do I think about BAA Fladbury, uh, the weir peg? I've definitely scratched an itch here today in that this is somewhere that I've wanted to uh, get on and, and try for probably a good couple of years now. So um, I'm glad I've, I've done it, but yeah, you can just see behind me there, you know, that weed bed there is not ideal at the minute. Makes fishing the peg difficult. There's loads of snags out there, so I've lost quite a bit of gear today, which I don't really like leaving terminal tackle in the river uh, for whatever reason. So I'll be back, I think, but I'm going to wait till the autumn, wait till the weeds died, wait till the levels back up and there's some water on that uh, on that weir section behind us there. And these shallow areas right down in the margin here um, are actually uh, fishable and in play as such. But um, yeah. Hope you've enjoyed the video. It's given you a good idea on the uh, on, on BAA Fabry and uh, the Weir Peg. Catch you on the next one again soon. Thanks for watching.